I was on this wall in the first tactics video, so I figured I'm, I'm back. This is the tactics wall now. So, it's good to be back on a, on a smaller screen this time after spending so much on that MMO. If the Final Fantasy XI video was a big two-hour special quote-unquote season two premiere of the show, then maybe you can consider this one filler. Tactics is not my genre. If you've watched the original, you probably know that. And here we are in another. If you watched the last video, you know at the end I vowed to touch grass after being kind of upset with the state of myself that I put myself in to beat that MMO, officially. And touch grass I did. It wasn't just in my backyard. I took a trek across the American country and I experienced the outdoors in many ways, in many places. It, it, it was a great break. You should always take a break. Not from, I'm not even talking about work, I mean like anything, video games, you should take a break from everything. And it was really nice. But lucky for me, the next entry I was going to tackle in the series was a portable. And during those 10 hour car drives of which I weren't driving, I got to experience Final Fantasy Tactics Advance on my coral pink Nintendo DS Lite. I played Final Fantasy Tactics Advance in Kansas. I played it in Ohio. I played it in Nevada, Utah, all the way across in that line. Maybe I'm the only person who've ever played this game in all those states at the same time. Wow, I'll write that on my gravestone. So yeah, I don't mean to downplay it, but I kind of want this episode to be a little quicker. Let's jump into the story. Running off of the grand medieval story of the original tactics, this one is much more small scale. It's actually the first Final Fantasy game to take place technically in modern times. A modernized city, you can even see a car, like an engine and, and all that, like a real deal town. And all these kids go to school, it opens in a snowball fight where you get to play a little tactics game with snowballs, it's fun, it's cute. And all these kids get bullied. You got March, or, or do you pronounce it March A? I don't know. You got Ritz Crackers, that's her actual name, Mute, a couple other guys, they're all getting bullied, you know, they're the nerds of the group, of course. You go home to your brother who's wheelchair bound. Everyone kind of has a crappy life here. There are people who, whose dad like went away, parents died, everybody's just, their life sucks and they're just kids and it's kind of sad. And they all come together at March's house and the paraplegic brother opens a book and he's like, this is a role-playing game I found. You guys want to play? It's called Final Fantasy. Psh, whoa! And before you know it, everybody gets actually sucked into the world of Final Fantasy. It's a meta game, and that stays true through like the references in the game and everything. There, there are weapons such as the Buster Sword, the Hard Edge, the Lion Heart, all these weapons from old classic Final Fantasy games. It's crazy we've come so far in this series that we are now referring to other games as classic as if we didn't just play them a few months ago. So they're stuck here and they gotta figure out how to get out. But along the way, they find out their lives are changed. Ritz, she was bullied for having white hair. She actually dyed her hair pink. Okay, that's not the most emotional story, but that's kind of her whole arc, is that she finds out that white hair isn't so bad. <laughs> Moot, though, Mute, or whatever. He was bullied the worst out of all, but in this world, he's the prince, and he's kind of ordering people around, and he has the power. He's kind of one of the main antagonists. And you gotta be like, no, Mute, you have to come back to reality. But in reality, I'm a pipsqueak who gets bullied. No, but it's better, trust me. And you gotta be like, no, trust me, it's, it's better. Because, you know, real life. The worst of all, your paraplegic brother has working legs in this world. And he's out adventuring, having a great time. And your job is to be the responsible kid and go like, guys, we gotta go home. It's probably a story you've seen before. I can't pinpoint an exact movie or something that this plot seems to be ripping off, but I just know I've seen it before. Let me know if you know what I'm thinking of. That's the gist of the story. You can kind of predict what's gonna happen. It's certainly 
nowhere near the scale of that original story. I didn't talk about the story of the original tactics in my review because I was so damn distracted by the intensity of the gameplay. I almost glossed over the story entirely. The gameplay gimmick of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance bleeds its way into the story in a weird way. The main gimmick of FF Tactics Advance is laws. The laws are a new system in which they change daily. Days pass by in this game every time you move once on the map. So it's an ingrained time system. Every day, the laws move up, and there's new laws you need to follow. It basically means, in a battle that you participate on this day, you must follow these laws. And that basically means you cannot use certain things. So the law of today is you can't use color magic or whatever. The law of today is you can't use guns or something like that. And you just have to work your strategy around these laws. It's an interesting idea in concept, but in practice, I'm not so sure. My very first non-tutorial battle on my own, the laws that I had to follow, one of them was that I was not allowed to use swords. I was not experimenting with any jobs, it was my first battle, all of my characters had swords. Basically what happens is, if you use a sword, if you break the law, you get a yellow card. The judge is on the battlefield in every battle and all he does is watch. You can't interact with him, I don't even know why he's really there, it's kind of pointless. But he's there, and he walks up to you, and gives you the yellow card. If you do it again, you get a red card, and you get thrown in jail. Your character leaves, and it cannot play in the battle, and you need to go to the jail and pay off the ransom, but he's also got to serve actual time. So he's got to stay in jail for a certain number of battles, and you just can't use that character. It's actually dreadful. It's awful. Because you're supposed to be constantly evolving these characters, leveling them up, getting them new abilities and everything, and if, if a character just needs to be away for three battles, that's devastating. So this system immediately kind of punches you in the face, at least in my case. But here's kind of the thing. As annoying as it is, it's incredibly easy to exploit. Like I said, you move once on the map and the laws change. You can see what's going to be the law tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So if you're about to walk onto a space that's going to be the next story battle or something, you can just walk back and forth over here until you see, oh, okay, so now, now tomorrow's law is going to be that I can't use summon magic. Well, I don't have a summoner. That's good. Okay, jump into the battle. And then you ignore the law. That is kind of how the game is played. And judging from what people say online, that's basically what happens. Everyone just ignores the law. So the entire gimmick of the game is annoying at best and ignored at worst. Huh. And I say these laws are ingrained in the story because, like I said, Newt is the prince. He's kind of the one that decrees the laws. And there's a, there's a dramatic scene where one of the characters is like talking to the judge and goes like, all right, make sure you enforce these laws. Judge. Sid. They drop a Sid update right on you when you least expect it. Sid is the judge, who in real life, in like the outside of the book world, is like a drunken dad who fails at everything, but now he's like a tough judge guy, and a main character of the story. Now you might remember Sid, Sidolphus from the original Tactics, who is famously known as the guy who breaks the difficulty curve joins your party and is just unstoppable and makes you win the game. I welcomed him with open arms because I was struggling real bad with that game. This game you can't use Sid, he's not a, he's a judge, so he's not going to be a party member, he's not going to help you out. But did I need a Sidolphus this time? That was my biggest question because I was really worried. Let's talk about a few things that are gone from the original tactics. Number one, permadeath. That's right! No stupid permadeath. I, okay, I don't understand permadeath. Can I just say that now? I feel like I was giving the game a benefit of the doubt a lot in my last review, the, the, the tactics review. I don't, I'm not down with permadeath. Why is this a thing? It doesn't make the game more fun. It just means I'm gonna be turning the game off and on a lot. 
because losing a character, it's not just like, okay, you can let the character die and not play on such a hardcore quote-unquote difficulty. No. If you lose a character, you're so screwed for the rest of the game because you just don't have a character that powerful. You need to train up a new guy from scratch with permadeath. I don't understand why that's like a beloved feature in any of these like Fire Emblem games or anything like that. It's... I don't get it. The judges judge every battle that you participate in in this game, and they apparently are the ones who ensure that permadeath doesn't happen because I guess nobody dies in this world. They're just beaten, they fall to the ground and passed out. But there are a few ragtag areas of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance where judges aren't present and permadeath is very much a thing there. And I've almost made a dire mistake in those areas, so just watch out for that. Number two, moves taking multiple turns. The move list, the turn order in Tactics 1 was one of the most important resources you could have because you do a magic spell and it would take literally nine turns. You just use it and you can use it on an area and hope that the other character doesn't move during those nine turns. And just like, oh, I really hope it happens. It's got like a 20% chance of even hitting. So I just gotta use it and then nine turns later, you'll find out if that hits. It's like, it's really deep. If you're really into the strategy side, that could be appealing to try and figure that out. But most of the time it just screwed me over a lot. So that's gone. If you use a magic spell in this game, you're using it right there. You're gonna know if it's gonna hit the guy. It's, it's really nice, I gotta say. Number three, job points are now ability points. So in the original tactics, you basically, every time you do an action, you get job points and you spend the job points on abilities. In this, if you participate in the battle, you just get a set amount of ability points. And that goes towards whatever ability you're currently training. It's a lot more streamlined and easier to figure out. What's tied to your actions is your actual level. You earn XP every time you do an action, which means, of course, the most efficient way to play is to once again attack your own party members just to get that little bit of XP and it, it adds up over time. I can't believe it's 2003 and we're still attacking each other for XP. Can we stop that? Does that not scream like this is a stupid system to anybody else but me? Like I don't want to play a game where the guide immediately tells me, all right, make sure, take this opportunity now that the enemy's weak to just spend a couple of turns killing yourself because it'll get you XP and then you can finish off the enemy. Like, why are games structured so that that's a thing that I should do to succeed? Can we stop? Anyway, the AP system is better than the job, the JP system in the first game. I'll, I'll, I'll concede that. Number four, you don't have commit to moves. So every turn, every character, you move and you do an action. In the first game, if you moved, you were stuck. So if you were attempting to get a little bit closer to the enemy to hopefully have enough range to hit him, and you move and you realize you don't have enough range, you just put yourself in harm's way. Screw you, you're still in harm's way, and you also can't attack now. That's how brutal the original was. So unnecessary. In this game, it allows you to back up if you made a mistake. Wow, thank you. Like, I, I feel like there's a difference between just screwing you over and being hardcore tactics. Like, you know what I mean? You know? And finally, number five. Woo! I can complain about how the law system's bad, but it ain't worse than the Zodiac system from the original. To jog your memory, every person has a Zodiac sign. If they interact with one that's a bad match, according to the Zodiac calendar, they just wouldn't do good damage. Or the attack would miss 90% of the time or something ridiculous like that. And you as a player have no control over that. So it was incredibly frustrating. Man, looking back on the original tactics, I feel like I cut that game a lot of slack. There's a lot of nonsense that you just gotta put up with. And this game, all five of those things, man, no Zodiac crap in this. It's so direct, you, you, you can move your guy, you can tell it to do something, you'll see exactly how likely it'll hit and how much damage it could do, and you do it. Boom. So yes, this game is significantly easier than the original. It's also easier due to my experience with the original. This might be unprecedented. I usually say you gotta play games in order, but I think if you're looking to get into FF Tactics, I would start with this game because if you start with the original, you're just going to be very angry like I was. 
My only main complaint is that, yeah, the laws are really annoying. I would not always check the laws every day. So I'd go into a battle and use an attack that was apparently against the law, and then my guy would get arrested, and I'd be like, that would be very frustrating. And at that point, you have to make the decision. Do I turn the game off and on now and waste the whole half battle that I played? Or do I just take the loss, spend the money, put him in jail for a couple battles and just deal with it? Usually the latter is not the best option. It's really devastating. Sometimes if you break the law, you can get permanent stat debuffs. It's brutal. So you can just continue to exploit the system. They even officially in the game give you law cards which are used to get rid of laws you don't like and replace them with new ones to hopefully affect your enemy in a bad way. Yeah, the enemy can break the law too, they just kind of don't usually, so it's not its not really a well-balanced system. You're gonna get screwed way more. And some of the laws are just annoying, like I'll read through them and I'll be like, okay, that's, that's self-explanatory. I, I go up to my gunner and I have him shoot somebody with a gun and then the, the judge will go like, ah, that's a yellow card. By the way, they don't even explain to you which law you broke. It's very frustrating. They don't explain the laws very well at all because I got sent to jail for using my gun and I was like, why? And then I looked in the law list and it was like, don't use magic, don't use this, don't use instruments. Oh, a gun is an instrument and now I'm in jail? Like, just just explain them more. Just explain them more. So all you gotta do is keep your eye on the law system. And the rest of the tactics work itself out. Now, in terms of jobs and abilities, there's a wider variety here, I believe, than in the first one. Maybe there were more abilities per job in the first one, but there are a lot more jobs in this. There are jobs I don't even really know what they do, but I dabbled my fingers in a lot of them. This game had a good payoff. You know, it's just that I feel like for 30 hours of the game, I spent juggling jobs and trying to learn as many abilities as I could just so I could secure myself as well-rounded enough to beat whoever I could come across, but those last 10 hours, once I settled down in the jobs that I liked, I was wrecking house. It was great. And by the way, I started off following a guide step by step because I was so worried after my experience with the original tactics, but eventually I dropped the guide entirely and just went on my own and it worked out. I was proud of myself. To me, the satisfaction that this game gives me is really nice. It just takes 30 hours. Whereas, I can kind of get that same exact satisfaction of building my character the way I want in kind of any other RPG with that type of freedom. But the RPG will bring me a more in-depth story with characters that I can grow closer to and gameplay that's more fun in general. Like a tactics battle takes 10 minutes at least. That's so much time just to be Go here, go here, attack guy, get the next guy, wait for the computer to do their slow turn, like... I don't think this tactics thing appeals to me as much as most. I'm just saying that. But I think I like this game more than the first, just because it's just a little easier to figure out and a little more satisfying. So through to the end, I was doing really well and not following a guide. I decided to check back at the guide before what I thought was the final boss, just to make sure there wasn't anything crazy, just to catch up. And the guy was like, all right, this is the final boss, make sure you're all ready, and make sure your guys are level 36 or higher. If they're not 36 or higher, you will not be able to fight this boss. I'm telling you, trust me, I'm the guy who wrote the guide. And I looked at my characters, and they were level 26. I figured, nah, let's give it a shot. Beat the final boss on my first try. I hope I didn't break anything. I hope the cable's all right. That wasn't worth it. That wasn't worth the bit. But I beat the final boss on my first try, so like, hey, it's because I had a good cast of characters with great abilities that I knew how to use effectively and tactically. So maybe tactics games aren't my thing, but maybe they just gotta, they just gotta take their time I gotta play a couple of them to get into it. Hey, there's at least one more tactics games in this series, so... Maybe I'll like that way more than these, even. Maybe I'll just keep liking them more and more. They, they gotta grow on you. Maybe that's it. I gotta give a shout out to my team. and To prove to you how varied your options are, let's read through my party list. So you got the main guy, he was a soldier, paladin, thief, 
fighter ninja. Then Dino, the black mage, archer, white mage, blue mage. Then you got Mont Blanc, the Moogle. By the way, I didn't mention, you see the Moogles in this game? They don't look like Moogles. I don't know what's up with that. They look like rabbits or something. What did they do to the Moogles? That's weird. Anyway, he was a black mage, gunner, time mage. France. She was a white mage, sage, alchemist, black mage, who absolutely wrecked house. MVP was France. Cecilia, the sniper, assassin, fencer, summoner, elementalist. I don't even know what an elementalist is. Then you got Rooster, the dragoon, warrior, defender, monk, templar. I mean, so many abilities you can mix and match. That's the fun of these games, and I get that. I just think it's a bit too much work to get to that fun part for me. And that's it, man. I mean, we're wrapping it up. I, I, I'm trying to keep this one shorter. <laughs> just given my try. I mean, I haven't uploaded a video that was less than an hour in like months. Give me a break, for God's sake. I also feel like I've been in a kind of a rut with this Final Fantasy stuff. I mean, I made the most out of it. I had fun, but I don't like anime. I had to watch the most forgettable anime ever. I don't like MMOs. I had to play 20 year old MMO. I don't like tactics games. I had to play a Game Boy tactics game. Like, this, these are not the games I signed up for, let's just say that. But now, we're getting into the juicy stuff next. The next game and the games that follow, they're all, they're all the stuff I'm really interested in experiencing and talking about. This next game, it's very divisive among fans. Some say it's a mainline game, others say it's absolutely not. I don't know why it's so divisive, but I'm very interested to find out. Join me next time when I play Final Fantasy X. Two.